Hello everyone and welcome to Ellen with a Y Goes Live. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I'm so excited. I have such a great episode planned. I have an incredible guest. Aria Sanabria Malai is going to be joining me of Flower Bodega later on in the episode. So stay tuned. I am just going to set the intention of the episode like I do every week for the 53rd episode. Cannot believe that. Everyone, take a breath and don't panic. <laughs> I feel like everyone is really starting to kind of go off their rocker a little bit with this whole COVID-19 Corona. I like how it has like a new name. It's been Corona, let's just like stick with it. Consistency. Just everyone's panicking and we all just need to like take a breath so everyone just remember, think, happy thoughts. <laughs> Keep calm, carry on, wash your hands. With everything going on in the world and the fact that it's kind of like turned up to 11 this week, just remember like it's okay. It's kind of like the flu. If you don't have pre existing conditions, just take a breath and wash your hands and get, you know, some hand sanitizer. But just <laughs> breathe. I feel like I watched a couple people in the last couple of days like really do, you know, that feeling. It's just like, just breathe, it's okay. We're gonna be okay. And just look out for all the people around you and be smart, wash your hands, and it'll be okay. So moving into my hot topic, corona related, <laughs> not to hype anybody up after I just told everyone to calm down, but um, I have it to announce that Coachella and Stagecoats have now officially been postponed to October. I cannot even believe that this is what it's come to. As you know, if you don't know, South by Southwest, which is supposed to be happening this week, was canceled, which is terrible for all the people in Austin that were really relying on the business flying in. I've been to Austin for South by. It's a really, really cool thing. I've met some really cool people that actually live there and then would take off work and donate their time to help out at South by so they could see it and check it out and experience it. And it just, it stinks that that kind of stuff is what's happening. So just remember also that people are probably going through a lot more right now than you can imagine. There's a lot going on beneath the surface. Um, and it's in particular, all these Coachella heads that love <laughs> that music festival, um, I can't imagine how they're feeling and we can try to empathize with them. <laughs> Um, oh, I just have to also say, I did not watch The Bachelor finale yet this evening because I have a more important show to participate in. Uh, so please do not spoil it for me as we move into my what to watch segment, which is don't watch The Bachelor. <laughs> it's terrible. It sucked me in. I literally gave this show every Monday night of my life. And I, so Catherine and I, we started watching it together. I usually only watch The Bachelor or The Bachelorette when it gets to hometowns because I can't believe that these are real people. So I have to see what their families are like. Like these people that are just putting themselves out there on, so on the TV to just publicly date, but not really date. It's very strange to me. So I like seeing their families. But so I didn't, I never really watched it before this year and I got sucked in with this Peter Pilot Pete guy. Again, please don't say anything. <laughs> I wanna watch it. I wanna watch the finale. But I heard it's like really insane. But my what to watch is more of like a what not to watch. Like don't get sucked into The Bachelor. Like don't get sucked into this universe. It's like you're more hate watching than anything else. You're like yelling at the screen. I'm constantly screaming at my television. Catherine can attest to it. It's just like, what are you doing? How can you, like no one's even saying anything. They have relationship conversations and they're not even talking about the real stuff. Like what is Peter's favorite color? None of us can answer that. I have watched him go on dates with 20 some odd women and I don't, couldn't tell you his favorite color. I don't know what his favorite food is. Like it's weird that you actually don't get to know these people at all. All you know is he's developing feelings. He feels a strong connection. Stay to the process, stick with the process. And then every girl's complaining about drama in the house. Like. It's ridiculous. So I've never done this before, but even though I watch The Bachelor, my what to watch is what not to watch. And don't watch The Bachelor. <laughs> so that's my what not to watch, is don't get sucked in like I have. So moving into food for thought, I feel like this episode is just gonna be titled Corona. <laughs> my food for thought is obviously tied to Corona. Okay, so I just have this thought, food for thought. 
we're all saying wash your hands, right? We're all saying wash your hands, wash your hands. You say it a million different ways and the inflection can mean a lot of different things like wash your hands or wash your hands. And I have a feeling that in 150 years from now, wash your hands will have become like a colloquialism, kind of like the phrase okay, where we all say in modern society today, we all say okay. Like, okay, I'll do that, okay, I'll do this. But I, where did it come from? Okay is not like a word that has like a Latin root. It's like, okay. So <laughs> I feel like 150 years from now, we're gonna have people saying, wash your hands as like a term of endearment. And then you would respond like in kind, like, and you as well, or like, and to you also. Like it's gonna become this like new way of saying like, I care for you or something. And so it got me thinking a lot about like, well, okay, where did okay come from? And the, I think the word is like etymology is de hotly debated on Wikipedia. And <laughs> just as far as my research got. And it says that it's either in reference to some guy that was running for presidential office, which like no shock there, um, that they were like coming up with like catchphrases even back in the 1800s. Or then there was also something that said that okay was a derivative of a Native American word that of course everyone took from the Native Americans like many other things. So I'm not surprised that that's also probably the root of the word. So all I'm saying is that maybe this can be the archival content that some 150 years from now youth looks up on their brain internet inside their eyeball and they find this episode of Ellen with a Y goes live and they will know the root and the meaning and what happened in our culture and why wash your hands became a sign of endearment and love. So I say to you all that watch my show week over week, wash your hands. And then you would say back and to you as well. <laughs> like a church <laughs> peace be with you <laughs> that's what it reminds me of actually okay that's my food for thought hopefully everyone again like try to remain calm in these difficult times and if you want to laugh you should go check out is it canceled yet.com and they are tracking big events to little events of is it canceled or not and it's really funny and it kind of adds some levity so that is food for thought which means I'm moving into the guest portion of my show, and I'd like to bring on Arias and Aubrey Malai. I was making such a big deal. Hi. So, Aria, welcome to the show. Thank Aria you. is the creative lead founder mm -hmm. artist for Flower Bodega. You can check her out on Instagram and yep. also on her website, www.flowerbodega.com flowerbodega.com, yep. same for Instagram. <laughs> and you can catch her creating custom arrangements and floral experiences for various brands and events. Um, some of the brands that you've worked with are Amazon, Adidas, CoverGirl, Netflix, mm -hmm. Instagram. So we have a real professional here with us this evening. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited that you're here and you were able to take time out of your busy schedule. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and come on the show. We're so excited to be here. We It's like become this thing now where I refer to flower bodega as we. Yeah. I am so excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you represent, it's not just you, it's mm -hmm. a company and you have people yeah. that are involved in it. So mm -hmm. for sure, you are an employer and yeah. a founder. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> so I always start the interview with asking the guests, because I've mm -hmm. been talking for a minute, mm -hmm. how do we know each other? So we know each other through our work at Refinery29. Um, I used to work on the events team over there for about four years. I left last February and Ellen and I, I think we sat on the same floor at one point. We were all on- Very events. early days, yes. Yeah, and then we, I don't think we ever really officially worked together on a project, no. <laughs> but when I came back as the florist for Refinery after I left as a full-time employee, I um, produced florals for the shoot that Ellen posted in her Instagram feed today uh, for another brand, and she was this fabulous model <laughs> in the set that I created. So that's kind of how we got to really start like talking really connected <laughs> yeah. yeah oh my gosh gotta love refinery right yeah and it was so beautiful all the floral or everything that you do for all the events that we have anytime i'm posting from like a work event and there's beautiful arrangements like that's always aria i feel like Thank i'm you. always like tagging you i'm like guys this is the person it's just yeah. real <laughs> so i wanted to talk to you a little bit about 
like the genesis of Flower Bodega. Okay. And because you said you worked in events before mm-hmm. and still do. Yes. And, you know, how how did that come to be and how did you get formal flower training? Yeah, sure. So I was an event producer. I've been in event production for a little over 10 years now. I was working at Refinery29 and it was actually my time there working on dinner parties and really elegant, elevated event experiences with you know, fashion brands and, and large commercial um, partnerships that I started to have to hire um, florists to do a lot of the work. And we did this really big event in Miami actually for um, a very high profile and high level uh, fashion design house. And the florist had thousands of uh, flowers to process on in like this really weird hotel room, conference room. And, <laughs> and I offered to help kind of process all of the flowers with her and got to talking. She started talking about like, flower care and conditioning and it was such a therapeutic experience that I fell in love with it and was like wait a minute I have to kind of explore this a little bit more it's kind of calming especially for the nature of events and Mm -hmm. production which can be very stressful so she actually let me style one of the photo moments at the event and it got like a lot of press and and great photos out of it so um, I always like refer back to that one event that kind of sparked uh, the desire to explore florals and then my time at refinery also they had an education stipend there that um, allowed employees to explore avenues that they were interested in and they offered to pay for some of that and I used my stipend for floral education classes and so I went to flower school which is like yes it's a real thing yes um, and also courses with the Brooklyn uh, with the New York Botanical Garden in Midtown at their Midtown school so um, I learned so much there fell in love with it and slowly but surely became the refinery kind of in-house florist yeah. for our events Goes and for everything it, yeah and and it seriously just it was a snowball effect so I was doing events for refinery in-house went from really small not knowing really what I was doing as I took more classes I learned a lot more about um, shape and styling and and movement and different florals it's funny if I look back at some of my early work I kind of <laughs> cringe and I'm just like oh god oh god um, I feel like so many artists yeah. that have been on the show have said that like my early yeah. work or like oh yeah. I take it down after I post it because I don't want anyone mm-hmm. to see it anymore yeah like a lot of that stuff is archived now I'm um, at this point I have so much more creative freedom and it's all come full circle because I still do their florals now that I'm, you know, and do you have, on my own. Like when you went to like learn about florals, like are there mm-hmm. some like key philosophies? You know, I feel like a lot of people yeah. watching are kind of like, well, I might be, you know, not a professional, but I want to design something myself. Yeah. What's something that you could tell them? I think learning the basics for me, um, foundation is what really uh, sets you apart. So everyone has at some point in their lives picked up a bouquet of florals at the grocery store and try to create you know an arrangement for something they were hosting or for a loved one yeah Yeah. and um i think what i learned and what i took away the most from taking those classes is just the foundational practices so cleaning and conditioning your florals um, is something that you really learn how to do learning the different types of florals was really important for me stems are different florals behave differently they require different care and even the temperature and and how you handle them so that's a big foundation that i think people should learn and once you understand um, some of those basic principles like how to clean and condition them how to um, take care of them after they've been arranged um, learning different styling techniques Mm -hmm. i think you know you're seeing such a boom in the floral industry right now there's so many new um florists popping up and what's really cool about it is you know it's such a creative outlet and an an incredible form of expression and once you have those those key foundational principles i think you can just run with it and and it's really subjective to you know it's an art it's an art form i feel like there's so (laughs) much that people don't really know about the industry and Mm -hmm. about florals in general and i wanted to take it back to the name right so flower bodega can you explain how you came to the name flower bodega yeah so i actually came up with the name back in 2016 but i was unofficially going by flowers by aurea uh florals by aria and um it was like this funny little hashtag that we were creating and i knew that i wanted to create a brand not just be someone who was like an event floral stylist flower bodega is more than just you know bouquets or arrangements it's 
kind of a mood. It's based on mood. We evoke um, inspiration. We draw inspiration from so many different fields throughout creativity from film, music, dance. A lot of my arrangements are inspired by different things and um, Flower Bodega was just this name that came to me because I kind of grew up in a bodega. Bodegas are New York City staples. My stepdad owned a an actual corner deli yeah. in the Bronx on Bronx River <laughs> Avenue. And so that was a big part of my childhood, being exposed to those, um, you know, those types of fixtures in New York City, being a Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx, um, it felt really true to my backstory. My my father, not my stepfather, actually worked for Floris in the 70s on the Upper East Side. So he's just like never been able to shut up about um, all of the things he's learned yeah. during his time working for that <laughs> florist. So it's just like a lot of things that came together and, and inspired me to create that name. and. It's funny because I get so many questions about the name and, and the first thing I've had people come in when I've had pop up, um, you know, bodega stands at different events. Someone will see our neon. We have like this neon that says flower bodega. Someone will come in from the street and it'll often be like a Latina that comes in and it's just like, I just wanted to see, are you, are you a Latina using the word bodega? And I'm like, yes, Gaga, yes, I am. And so like, then it opens up the conversation because I think there's, you know, a lot of that word getting thrown around and it feels very authentic to my experience mm -hmm. as, you know, a Puerto Rican girl from New York City who actually grew up in one and um, just kind of true to, you know, people always talk about the bodega flowers, the deli flowers, yeah. and it's just like a fun little cheeky way to flip it on its head. I love that. And I think that it's important to kind of call out the fact that a bodega is a New York fixture, but it is also a huge pillar of the Latinx community yeah. and what that means. And I think that I am not as versed and experienced in the floral industry at all whatsoever, <laughs> but just in conversations that we've been having, just, you know, when you're kind of maybe looking at your peer set and feeling like there might be lacking diversity or yeah. representation and, and how, mm -hmm. how do you approach that? Well, it's one of two things, right? I think if you read the About Us section on my website, I'm pretty transparent about, you know, my my background. Um, even on my Instagram and in some of the references, you'll you'll notice that, you know, I'm I'm a New York kid first and foremost. Um, I do like to pride myself on my work background and I have had the privilege to work for big media brands like Complex and Refinery29 and, and done some freelance work with Instagram. So a lot of um, the creative output that I've been able to put into the universe has been um, based on this foundation of just a strong work ethic and very strong creative direction. So a lot of the work that people see on my site they might not even realize who the creator is until you know i go into a meeting or on a site visit very recently i went on a site visit with a very high profile fashion brand and they at first when i went to approach them and say hello they kind of ignored me they gave me like a once over walked away and i had to kind of chase them around the store like hey you're actually meeting me like and and it was this weird awkward moment of like uh oh uh sorry we yeah. didn't realize kind of thing like you could see it in their face that maybe they were expecting someone different um so that was a learning i took that as a learning experience uh, i also saw it as an opportunity to share which is i guess why i'm comfortable speaking about that experience because i always want to make it easy for the next girl yeah. um to just kind of keep pushing and get that bag, which we did, by the way, yes. we landed the job and, you know, we're going to show them that, you know, we can do it too and we can do it better. Ooh. And, yes, you, be proud. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I want to make sure that that message is very clear that no matter what you look like, what your background is, everybody kind of deserves a seat at the table, especially creatively. And, um, the output of your work really doesn't have a face. It, it should really just speak for itself. Um, not that I'm not proud to be a Puerto Rican from the Bronx because I am and like, <laughs> We can talk about that offline. <laughs> I, lo I love it. I love it. And we're getting a lot of questions from the audience. So I really, I'm going to dive in and ask some of their questions. So the first one was, Ooh. what is your favorite flower? Ooh, my favorite flower. Right now, my favorite flower that I've been working with a lot. Um, 
is like a fell orchid which you might see in a lot of uh, my work that I've been posting lately but I also really love this flower called the Crespedia and its nickname is the Billy Ball. It's it's just my favorite. It's this little yellow ball on oh, a single stem. And I've seen those in your I pictures. love it. I, I, I absolutely love it. Um, I love working with them. It was kind of like something that I used in all of my arrangements in the very beginning. So they hold like a special place in my heart. But uh -huh. anthuriums are also like really fun to work with. They're kind of cool. I love that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and if you would, what's like the most requested flower that you're getting? So pompous grass right now pompous grass what is that <laughs> pompous grass is like that feathery grassy stuff that um has blown up on pinterest and is in every installation that you're seeing right now it's a preserved grass essentially uh some of right now it's not in season so you'll see a lot of it dried it's available like on amazon the benefit of using pompous grass is that you you know kind of lasts forever you keep it in a vase and it's like just an easy decor statement piece um as a florist and as a creator um i'm kind of bored of using it yeah. but um i try to push myself because i'm i, I feel like it's not going away just <laughs> yet um i feel that i continue to try to push where I can take it and how I can make it a little different from maybe what other people mm -hmm. are doing or how I can put my perspective on it. Sometimes um, constraints are the thing that help you be more yeah, creative. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely been pushing me because I, I use it in almost every, you know, client uh you know creation Deliver lately. Oh my gosh. For like I want to say the last seven months. It's oh, just wow. been about pompous grass. Oh my gosh. So. Well, yeah. we also have another audience question, which jumps us into our game, Would You Rather? Oh, God. From Mr. Dave Kopak. Hi, Dave. Would you rather <laughs> only be able to use carnations or every flower you use is very, very sticky? Mm. This is a tough one, and I feel like, let me just like dispel the myth that carnations are a no-no. I actually believed in that. I kind of fed into that hype too, but um, as I got more comfortable with floral design and creation. I, I've learned a lot about carnations and they're actually a great medium bloom and they add so much color to arrangements and you'll see them like at even the top tier florists are using them in, the, in their arrangements. They actually have these style called vintage carnations and they've got this like antique effect and how they're dyed so they're not just like the typical cheesy ones you might see you know at like a deli but um they just have so much more character and more often than not people are like i can't even believe those are carnations but i will say <laughs> i will go for the every other flower i use is very sticky because i can wear gloves which i own there you and go. you didn't specify so <laughs> I love when people have yeah. workarounds with the would you rathers. <laughs> We're getting also a lot of questions about just like a master class and like how do you learn mm -hmm. these things. And I think something that is really awesome and you talked about just before, which mm -hmm. wanting to share and bring other people forward with you. Yeah. You have workshops, we you do. have classes. So can you talk a little bit about yeah. that and tell us about the ones that you have coming up? Yeah, so I actually just released a full spring calendar of some fun workshops coming down the pipeline. We have our first one on March 26th, so if you're not afraid um, and we're not completely shut down by the <laughs> government, please check it out on our site and sign up. Uh, we're making hand tied bouquets there and then um, moving on into the entire month of April, every Thursday or every other Thursday, Thursday, we have um, spring arrangements, so we'll actually be creating arrangements in bases. Um, they're super fun, approachable. I'm not charging, you know, $300 for like an intensive. What I am going to talk to you a lot about is color theory, cleaning and conditioning your florals, and how you can integrate the basic principles of floral design into your everyday life. And it's really awesome because I've hosted these workshops quite a bit, like for the last two years, and I'll still, you know, months after a workshop, get someone who joined my class tagging me in their story mm -hmm. or like photo, you know, on their feed of these arrangements that they've been creating. So um, it's really fulfilling, it's fun. We serve wine um, and, you know, we just have a lot of fun with it. We play great music and, and we just go at it. It's I great. love that. I love like. <laughs> Like, um, I like the concept of these like activities that people are doing yeah. where it, I just personally enjoy experiences, especially someone yeah. who comes from that world. I think you can enrich your life and have really positive interactions with other people in your life and you yeah. get to talk about things that you wouldn't necessarily talk about when you're experiencing something together. I think we can all, you know, go to the movies as much as we want, yeah. but like it's fun to actually do something 
with your friends and your family. So I think this is a yeah. perfect Thank you. activity. My family would love this. We love this. Kind of, we just did like a paint thing for my cousin's yeah. birthday. I actually did that with my cousin and I had so much fun. And it's yeah. like, everybody is creative. I think sometimes people get afraid that floral design is um, unapproachable and, and a serious business, which it is. But I think everyone should be interested in hosting and creating. It's a fun um quick, relatively quick interaction that you can do even at home um, once you have some basic ideas of how to take care of your flowers and, and design them in a way that don't just look like you, you bought them at a store and dropped them <laughs> into the first vase you have at home. So yeah, that's what we talk about. So everyone, you need to go check out Aria on Instagram at Flower Bodega <laughs> and on her website, yes. flowerbodega.com. Check out when these upcoming workshops are. Check out her beautiful space. Yeah. It's stunning, your new studio space. Yeah. And I want to thank you. I can't believe the time has I know. flown. I was like, we played the game <laughs> in sorry, the comments. I talk so much. No, you're good. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for joining me. Thank it you. means a lot that you would come out, especially yeah. in this time. Don't worry, we curelled, <laughs> we antiseptic, we washed our hands 10 times. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. out and sharing you. your story. I think that there's a lot of interest here. And yeah. People want to hear more from you. I know. I can't wait. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching this show week over week. If you yeah. caught yourself smiling while you're watching the show, that's the whole point of it. And I hope you go out and spread that kind of joy to somebody else. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Guys. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. To subscribe to my channel, click here. And to watch more videos, click here. Be sure to like, comment, and hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. Sit down, choosing hair.